Welcome back to This is Van Color. Now, we've dedicated tonight's entire show to discussing foreign interference in Canadian elections, federally and locally. Our next guest was not only allegedly targeted by Beijing in retaliation for criticizing China, but he claims that he lost his seat in Parliament in the 2021 federal election as a result of foreign election interference. The former Conservative Member of Parliament for Steveston, Richmond East, he is Kenny Chu. Kenny, thanks for being on the program today. Well, thank you for having me, Mo. Absolutely. So we now know that there was a CSIS report in November 2021 detailing how China's Consul General Tao Xiaoling uh, was kind of bragging and, and saying that, you know, her office's tactics to remove unfavorable candidates like yourself was successful. That was 2021. We're only now really talking about foreign election interference in 2023. Why have we been asleep at the wheel? I know you've been sounding off the alarm, but what's going on here? Well, frankly, to be uh, to be uh, honest, the only thing surprising is that they got caught and there has been CSIS reports on this. Um, but CSIS have been sounding an alarm ever since that I uh, start paying attention to the foreign interference uh, issue uh, way back in uh, 2020, uh, 2011. For example, uh, Richard Fadden, the former CSIS director, had already tabled uh, report saying that Ontario pol uh, parliamentarians, uh, Ontario politicians, mm -hmm. um, are subject to Russia, uh, uh, Iran, and China's interference. Mm. So we know that for a long time. And, you know, the former government may, you know, there, there are times when they try to juggle the two balls to do trade with countries like China, but at the same time, they are being uh, forthright and, and be, you know, upfront to, to these, uh, uh, you know, regimes. But it seems like since 2015, um, the the current government has not been paying much attention. We know that in, in Vancouver, for example, there is a couple, uh, Kevin and Julia Garretts. Mm -hmm. uh, they were incarcerated after living in Can uh, in China for like 30 years, yeah. and all of a sudden arbitrarily detained because Canada extradited uh, a hacker, you know, to the United States and. Under Justin Trudeau, these uh, these Garrets were released, so they they cannot they cannot claim that they don't know about this nature that is in communist China. So when the two Michaels were um, arrested, uh, we we know that it had happened before. They just didn't pay attention to it, and to make things even matters even worse, we see the current government even attempted to uh, conduct extradition treaties with China or even free trade with China uh, at 2016-17-ish time. So it makes, it begs the question, why? Why are they doing this? Uh, why is there an admiration for such a regime? And there's obviously the, the failed collaboration of trying to get a, a COVID vaccine as well. But when we're looking at foreign election interference, I want to hear it from you firsthand. What did you experience where you were like, this has to be a foreign government meddling in our election. Well, the, fo the current focus is on during the election time. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, during the election time, there has been a lot of disinformation spread, but the disinformation did not start only uh, during election time. Mm. Uh, I start getting hate mails, I start getting uh, calls, and, and also accusation of me betraying the Chinese uh, uh, compatriots and also uh, uh, diaspora communities. Hmm. And then that disinformation, though those hate, continue even to do today, right here. Um, the the Go by Mail. And is there and, evidence that you've seen firsthand that this is directed from you know the People's Republic of China, from the Consul General? It's it's circumstantial because mm -hmm. you've seen people who are close to the consulates. They are almost like at the front of uh, the, the the election campaign for Kenny Chu. Um, you know, it, the disinformation, for example, they were spread from Beijing sourced uh, websites oh, wow. and circulated okay. on Beijing approved uh, social media like WeChat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, they are, they, they've they done that all over the world and it's not the first time. They're professional. It's un unfortunately very unlikely that you'll find a smoking gun for that. But but very quickly, these CSIS leaks must be corroborating things that you've been talking about for years now, right? Th there is this side of me that actually is glad that it's coming to light right now because 
Uh, it, you know, I, I have observed it for so long. That's why I, while I was an MP, I, I put forward the motion to have a foreign registry, a foreign influence registry act. Mm -hmm. And for that, uh, that's the the accusation. That's when when it's actually uh, peaked hmm. and and start I, I start being labeled as uh, anti China, you know, uh, anti Chinese, <laughs> uh, Chinese haters, and all Despite that. Despite having Chinese heritage, absolutely. Yeah. So here's the problem with everything that we're talking about with regard to this foreign interference. I think that Canadian government should be very vigilant about this, but I worry that in its vigilance we might be completely painting the entire Chinese community as spies or, you know, something nefarious when when most Chinese Canadians are just, you know, getting along their day and, and just want to make a life here. So how do we stay vigilant, but then also ensure that we don't descend into McCarthyism well, or discrimination? Well, it's understandable with the history that Canada had had with uh, the Chinese Exclusion Act just being celebrated. You know, it's 100th anniversary mm -hmm. at one time that the Chinese are not welcome in Canada or have to pay a, a lot of money to actually be uh, immigrated to, to Canada. And also the uh, J J Japanese internment during the Second World War. All these also brought up fear and worry in the community community a lot. Um, unfortunately, uh, we our opponent also understand that very well. And sometimes it's been used as a, a wedge um, to, to split Canadian support and also to uh, in, in their own benefits. Um, what I what I would think that though is just like chewing gum and walking, you don't necessarily have to separate the two. Right. You can definitely do the same thing. We can we can say no to anti-Asian racism or to racism in general, but at the same time to deal with, um, you know, these foreign interference, doesn't matter whether they're Russian, Iranian, or Chinese, mm -hmm. uh, we just say no to both. Uh, and and I, I believe with will, uh, with uh, commitments, Canadian will be able to achieve that, reassuring the diaspora communities, but at the same time to deal with this highly threatening uh, issues that we're facing. And ultimately, isn't that what it's about? It's not about, you know, combating Chinese interference. It's about combating all foreign interference and having that filter where it's not about the nationality. It's yes. about outside governments trying to meddle into our affairs. Right? Absolutely, Mo. I mean, unfortunately, um, or maybe fortunately, we, we live in a multi-cultural uh, and also highly diverse society we are. Those people who need to be reassured, they may not be, um, you know, the audience for, for uh, you know, your, your radio stations or your TV stations mm. and in English. So the government needs to take up uh, the responsibility of reassuring them in the ways that they feel most comfortable. Right. And unfortunately, so that message, media that's right, that message has not been sufficiently covered. Yeah, fascinating. Kenny, thank you so much for your time tonight. This is really illuminating, and I appreciate your voice in this very important issue. Thank you, Mo, for giving me the opportunity to uh, explain and also highlight this uh, further. Absolutely. Folks, that's our show. Thank you so much to Kennedy Stewart and Kenny Chu for their time tonight. As always, if you want more This Is Van Color, find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Czech Media's YouTube channel, and the Czech Plus app. For now, though, this is Van Color, and I'm Mo Amir telling you that in a province where you can be anything, be colorful. Peace. Peace.